Hello everybody! Welcome back, or welcome if this is your first time here. I get questions all the time about how my prosthetic works, do I wear it all the time, what sorts of things does it help me with, how would I create a better prosthetic if I could, and I'm gonna answer as many of those questions as I can. Okay, so first things first, this is my hero arm. It is 3D printed, as you can see. I'm booting it up right now so it's gonna calibrate really quick. As you can hear, it's got that very <laughs> satisfying mechanical noise. I have part of a cosplay still on this. So, it did not cost anything to me. I was able, thankfully, to get it covered by insurance. But, that is not the case for everyone. I believe out of pocket, these cost a decent amount of money. So I don't know exactly how much this would have been if I were to have purchased it, but with insurance it was free to me, which was a blessing. So that brings me to how does this thing work? Well, let me show you the magic. It's actually pretty simple. The button on the back, you can see is sort of flashing right now. That controls the different finger patterns. Right now it's doing this finger pattern, just that finger, and all of the fingers. This part of the thumb can manually be popped in and out. This part of the thumb is mechanically moved by the hand. Um, I have yet to master moving it in and out with my arm. But if you flex a certain muscle, you can move this out. Right here, you can see, hopefully, these shiny little metal pieces. There's three on that side there and three on this side here. Those line up with specific muscle groupings on my arm, right here and right here. So that operates the arm. When I flex the inside muscles, the hand closes. When I flex the outside, it opens. And it's really that simple. This button right here is how I'm able to manually turn the wrist. This is so that I can adjust it. So I loosen it when I'm gonna put it on stick my arm in there, click it down and crank it. And that's how it stays on. You can see these Velcro pieces right here. That is how I get my arm covers to stay on. I think some other newer versions of this arm actually use magnets. Mine does not for some reason. I have a bunch of different arm covers, which I will show in a different video. I took off all the covers so that you can just see kind of the bare bones what we're working with here. So that's the arm. That's really the magic behind it. It doesn't read my brain waves or do anything like that. It's just kind of pretty simplistic in terms of how the technology works. That brings me to the second part of this. Do I use it a lot? Does it work well for me? And it's a complicated answer. So just a huge disclaimer that I'm going to put out there is this is just my personal experience and it's been my experience with prosthetics in general across my entire life. This prosthetic, I think the way that it's designed is awesome. It's very accessible and the most advanced prosthetic that I've seen that is actually an affordable price range for most people. I think that it's life-changing for a lot of people, especially people who have lost their limbs later in life and are used to kind of having a second hand to brace things and move things. I, on the other hand, do not get any practical use out of this prosthetic and it's you know no fault of the company or who made this or anything like that it's just how it is for me <laughs> number one reason why i don't regularly use this it's very heavy and because of that certain angles of the arm like right now my arm's about to fall out of it and I have tested the socket a number of times. I actually have had the arm sent back and totally remade one time already. My arm pulls away from the bottom of the prosthetic and makes it very difficult to reliably hit the electrodes that are on it. So that means that I can't reliably open or close the hand, which as you can imagine, kind of defeats the purpose of the prosthetic. Another huge reason why I don't wear this is this is as close as it can get to my face. I can get my elbow at a 90 degree angle and that's it. So I cannot, this is as close as we're getting. I cannot drink a glass of water. I can't do my makeup with it. I can't do any of those things with it. I can't eat. So it's not useful for those things. 
It is water resistant, sort of, but not waterproof. If I put a glove on it, I could use it to do the dishes, but I'm not able to sustain the weight of it while I'm trying to do a task like that. The things that I have been able to do with it with a lot of practice are like folding laundry, but it takes me about two or three times as long to fold laundry using the prosthetic than it would if I were to just do it without a prosthetic at all. Tying my shoes I can do with a lot of practice. That again takes about twice as long as me just like using this arm, <laughs> my regular arm to just tie my shoes. I think because I was born without a hand, I never had the brain connections or the practice or the reason or any of the enforcement or any of the prior knowledge of what it even feels like to have two hands, let alone be able to translate that knowledge into using a prosthetic. So when I was really little, I used to go to Shriners Hospital for children and they did give me what's called a myoelectric prosthetic, which is the same technology that this prosthetic uses. Mine was a lot less cool looking at the time. It was just like skin tone, didn't have this cool button here, didn't have the finger pattern. It was sort of stuck in this pinching position all the time and it was either closed or open. So I learned how to use a myoelectric prosthetic when I was very young and I struggled with it. I never wore it, I did not like it. It got in the way, it slowed me down. I was already so adept. I was able to tie my shoes, I was able to get dressed. Anything that you can imagine that a kid would need to do on my own without a prosthetic. So it didn't really give me the motivation or the desire to learn how to do things with a prosthetic. It didn't, I didn't gain anything from it. So I've spent some time over the last year or so thinking about, okay, well, if this doesn't work for me, what type of prosthetic might work better? What would I need out of a prosthetic in order for me to feel like it was worth using? in order for me to feel like it was worth learning how to use. It really boils down to it being easier to do a task using the prosthetic than it is to do it without that prosthetic. And that is harder to achieve than you might think, at least for me personally. There are very few tasks that I struggle with doing. One of them is like dicing vegetables. I am able to do it, but it takes me a little bit longer because I have to be extra careful not to cut myself because obviously if I'm putting my arm on top of like a slippery vegetable, you know, things can happen. So I just go really slow. It takes me a lot longer to do that type of task. It would be nice to have a second hand if I'm trying to do something like cut my own hair. I'd cut my own hair anyway, <laughs> but it could that could be improved if I had a second hand. It would be nice to have a prosthetic to use to do things like dishes and typing. Like typing on a keyboard would be an amazing thing to have a prosthetic for. I already type about 40 words per minute just using my hand and my arm, but it would be nice to not have to lean forward, contort my body, and put a lot of stress on my back. Which, as I approach 30, I've noticed some pain creeping up from years of having to contort my body to do things like type. With where technology is right now for prosthetics, we just don't have that kind of dexterity in them. As you can see, the fingers move together. I would need the dexterity of being able to individually move each finger fast enough and at different angles rather than just open or closed in order to type on a keyboard. The technology is improving, but we're not quite there for me to see significant benefits from having a prosthetic like this. I am in the process of getting another bionic arm from another company that works a little bit differently. I'm hoping that some of the challenges that I have with this bionic arm will be addressed by this new one. One of the main ones being that it has an additional support up here so that there's not so much weight just being kind of held on the end of my my little elbow here because having all of that there is difficult <laughs> that's all of the leverage that i have is this like one one inch space of my arm that's holding all of this weight and trying to move it and do things with it so the new arm that i'll be getting has a band here to help support some of that weight it also has a slightly different sensor system instead of having just the six electrodes three on each side in here. It has a whole bunch of sensors that sort of wrap around my entire arm to pick up on some more minute muscle movements. From my understanding, I do not have it yet. I probably won't have it for a while still because we are still in the fitting process currently. 
but I will keep you all updated as I move through that process. The new prosthetic will also be metallic silver, which is gonna be really cool. And while I love this arm and I love the pattern on it, it will be designed as a mirror image of the hand that I currently have. So it'll look just like my hand, but it will be metallic silver. So that'll be really cool. I think that's it for now. It seems like a good place to leave things. Let me know what questions you have. Leave them in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. I've got a bunch of links in the description box to all of the other projects that I'm working on. My husband and I do a podcast together called Here's Where Things Get Weird, so check that out too if you're interested. All right, I will see you later, everybody. Bye.